So our next speaker is Alicia Yishuan uh, Ho from the GASH Lab at UW-Madison, and she's going to talk about stress-dependent transcriptome changes and the role of those changes in yeast. So uh, proper stress response is important for cells uh, to adopt environmental stress, and it requires a coordination of a body uh, faces uh, physiological changes, including uh, uh, transcriptome change, translation regulation, and cell cycle uh, regulation. But how cells coordinate those uh, different kind of uh, physiological change is uh, still unclear. So uh, the transcriptome change upon stress in yeast has already been intensively uh, studied back in uh, 2000 back gas all. So it's showing over here, there are several different kinds of uh, stress has already been studied. But the, uh, even though there are all different kinds of stress, but there is a common pattern uh, in the transcriptome change. So RJ has already grouped those genes uh, in a colon environmental stress response, ESR, and it contains two groups. So the first one is the uh, the IESR, the induced uh, ESR, uh, it contains about 300 genes, and their functionality is uh, related to uh, stress defense. And another group is uh, repressed ESR, RESR. Uh, it contains about 600 uh, genes, and they are uh, ribosomal proteins or uh, ribosomal biogenesis uh, uh, proteins. So those genes are highly transcribed and uh, translated upon uh, in the uh, optimal growth condition. So I think this is a more uh, intuitive for people to understand that why upon the stress the cells want to induce uh, ISR genes uh, due to their functionality. So the question comes into that why cells want to repress ISR genes upon stress. So in 2007, Brow et al., they uh, measured the transcriptome change uh, in cells growing in uh, steady state chemo states uh, with different growth rate. And they compare the transcriptome change uh, to the cells uh, in batch culture. And as showing over here, the cells uh, with a uh, faster growing rate, they basically uh, have a little or no uh, ESR activation. So the blue represents the average of our ESR genes, and the red, the red one uh, represents the average of the ISR genes. So the slower growth rate, uh, they have a highly um, uh, ESR activation. So they observed there is a correlation between the uh, growth rate and the ESR activation. And this uh, correlation leads to a hypothesis that the uh, ESR activation upon stress might be due to the transient growth arrest. In other words, the ESR activation upon stress is not a direct stress uh, readout. Meanwhile, in 2014, there's another group. They proposed that uh, uh, stress have an impact on the cell cycle regulation, and that is the G1 cell cycle phases uh, can uh, activate the uh, ESR. On the contrary, our group would like to propose that the ESR activation is a direct uh, stress response. So in, or in order to address those uh, different models, um, the major uh, challenging over here is that it's very hard to decouple the growth arrest versus uh, stress. So the strategy that we use here is that I arrest cells in different cell cycle models. So I treat cells with uh, either alpha factor to arrest at G1 phase, or uh, nocardazole to arrest at G2M phases. So after two hours treatment, uh, about 95% to 85% of cells are arrested at their desired uh, phases. They are not really dividing, they are not really growing, and uh, with a minimal um, biomass accumulation. Then I measure their gene expression and then compare it to the synchronized cells. So the first thing is that uh, uh, both arrested cells at G1 or G2N phases uh, cells, they do have a mild ESR activation. And this observ observation here is already disproved the cell cycle model that's showing that the G1 phase is the major one that contributes to the ESR activation. We also have uh, other evidence uh, to support our statements, but due to the time uh, limitation uh, that I'm not going to go over detail of, of it. And the second thing is that if we compare to the real, truly uh, stress response, we can tell that the magnitude in the uh, arrested cells is much more uh, mild. 
uh, compared to the truly stress response. So that is indicating that the, the uh, gross arrest cannot be the only reason to explain the ESR activation upon stress. So the next is that I would like to uh, test to see if that uh, uh, the ESR response is a truly stress response. So I challenge our uh, arrested cells with uh, two different kinds of uh, uh, stress. So it's showing over here the y-axis is the asynchronized cells and the, uh, I'm sorry, the x-axis is the asynchronized cells and the y-axis is the arrested cells. And each dot represents one gene and you can see that upon the uh, cell stress in uh, G2M arrested cells, uh, there's a very good correlation between the ESR genes. And the same trend is uh, seen upon the heat shock stress and also in the G1 arrested cells. So the ESR activation is uh, highly correlated in the single time point, and this indicates that the ESR is a truly uh, active stress response. And furthermore, is that uh, uh, even those cells are already arrested, we still see there is a transient drop of the RESR uh, gene groups like uh, we observing in asynchronized cells. So we would like to propose that this transient drop of the RESR uh, genes, they do, uh, observe, uh, do provide a stress defense role. So um, in optima, under optimal growth condition, about 90% of the ribosomes, they are engaged to uh, active translation. So in other words, that uh, upon the stress, if cells want to translate their target genes, those are newly synthesized ISR genes, Cells must to think about how to reallocate the translation uh, capacity in some way. So we would like to propose that uh, upon the stress, the repression of the RESR genes will help to release the ribosomes for RESR uh, genes translation. So I'm currently uh, trying to further test out our model by, by running the polyzone um, profile, which separates uh, transcripts um, uh, with a different number of uh, ribosomes associated with it. And I'm going to sequence those uh, fractions uh, in uh, arrested cells, uh, asynchronized cells, before and after the stress. So I just show you that the ESR is a direct stress response, and I already disproved that the, the uh, cell cycle model. So then the question comes into then why people they, why there is a correlation between the growth rate and the ESR activation? So in order to reconcile it, that uh, uh, I measure the uh, proteomic data sets uh, in the asynchronized cells and uh, um, uh, arrested cells, along with our transcriptome change, and uh, trying to use a simple mathematic model to compare the translation regulation in dividing and arrested cells. So as shown over here, the protein concentration change is equal to the uh, KS, the translation coefficient times to the messenger RNA concentration, and then minus the protein decay rates uh, plus the division rate times the uh, protein concentration. So I plug in uh, previous uh, published data set and also our measurements, and then try to calculate the uh, KS, the translation coefficient uh, in the dividing cells and also arrested cells. So based on the uh, global um, um, transcriptomic and uh, proteomic uh, data sets, we know that uh, those arrested cells, they do have uh, unique profiles um, compared to asynchronized cells. So originally we were uh, predicting that the, the KS is going to correlate poorly uh, when compared to asynchronized cells. But surprisingly, they correlate very well. So it's showing over here, the axis is the KS in uh, synchronized cells, the y-axis the uh, KS in arrested cells, the blue one is the uh, G2N phases, and the, uh, the gray one is the uh, G1 phases. So each dot represents one protein uh, gene pair, and the first thing is that the slope is slightly lower than one. It's indicating that the global translation rate in arrested cells is slightly uh, slower uh, compared to asynchronized cells. The second thing is that uh, uh, the high R square, the good correlation, is indicating that uh, under the steady states, the protein uh, concentration is basically depends on the uh, messenger RNA level. So there's a little need to invoke transcript uh, specific translation changes. 
So since that we are also interested in uh, stress response, so uh, we also do a modeling upon the stress and try to predict the uh, protein abundance after the stress. So although we know that the model might, the assumption might hold after the, uh, trend, uh, after the stress response, um, but uh, I just uh, tried to compare it uh, to the, uh, our major uh, protein uh, level. And we found out that the, the uh, correlation is very bad between the predicted and also the real measured protein abundance. So this may due to the, the parameter is uh, different after the stress, where another possibility is there is a translation regulation upon the stress. So I'm currently uh, trying to test out this model by uh, running the uh, polyson seq uh, data to further uh, dissect this question. So the last is a little bit uh, summary of our model. So upon the stress, there is a temporal growth arrest and the ESR is highly activated. And uh, as I showed you early on, that uh, it's a, we propose this is a direct stress response. And we would like to propose that uh, uh, the reduction of the uh, RESR genes uh, can contribute to, uh, to help to uh, re reallocate cellular uh, resources at both at the transcriptional level and also the translation level. So the transcription uh, level uh, model is already published at 2014 for people who are interested. And the next is that the, when cells acromize from the stress, it reached its uh, new homeostasis. It has a adjusted growth rate, mild ESR activation, and the level of the ESR is uh, set by the uh, growth demand on, under the uh, steady state. So the last, I would like to thank for all the members in Gash Lab and also our collaborator, uh, Evgenia in uh, Josh Kuhn's lab for a proteomic data set, and also Ruchka in uh, Betty Craig's lab for uh, polyson profiles. And I thank you for your attention. I would like to take all the, uh, any comments, uh, suggestions, or questions. Thank you.